right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to show you exactly what's wrong with this idea of a thousand years coming after the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, I'm going to sh I'm going to make it very clear. Here we got one gentleman that's going to talk about it there, and then of course we have our friend Harvester Workers. I'm going to go over his comments after, but I just want to show you exactly right now why this is a wicked idea. It's evil, and there's a lot of reasons why it's cruel, and it's wicked, and it's evil, and it's not what the Bible teaches at all. Alright, so you've got here in Revelation 20, a thousand year period after the thousand year period okay so imagine this just let's play along with this game that so many people are teaching today all right so jesus comes down from heaven okay and sets up a thousand year earthly kingdom all right all right, so for a thousand years, um, the idea is that nobody is committing sin for a thousand years. So there can only be saved people during this thousand years. All right, now at the end of the thousand years, Satan is loosed to deceive the nations and to gather them to battle. Gather who? All you have is saved people. All right. So Satan gathers saved people to battle against God, and God sends fire down from heaven and devours saved people. That's a problem. You didn't you didn't think about this? You didn't think about oh you know, what's the Bible say? No, you just listen to what evil men taught. Liars and deceivers. All you didn't you trusted what they said and you didn't trust what the Bible says. This is why it's wicked. This is why it's cruel and it's evil. You have a thousand years of saved people living on in Christ's kingdom and then Satan is loosed and he gathers together saved people and fire comes down from God and devours all the saved people. It's stupid. It's not what the Bible says at Oh, it's stupid and it's dumb, it's evil, cruel, wicked. I just get those words out of the way here. Because our friend Harvester, Harvest Workers 1218 doesn't like that strong language. And there is no other language to use when talking about this subject. I don't know why you would be okay with people lying to you, but you're not okay with me setting the record straight and using strong language. If it got your attention, good. Now, here, Harvest Workers, he's, he's going on and on about how offended he is, okay? He doesn't really give anything of substance. This may all seem quite petty. Yeah. Nothing more I'm going to say to you. That's it. I choose to remain silent seeing that this initial issue remains unresolved. Well, you don't want to address a very simple question that I asked you. Let us hear the conclusion. Oops. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Okay. 
Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. I, rem I choose to remain silent, even though he's he's got 15 comments here. <laughs> That's okay, man. It really is. But I just I asked a question. And I think if you be honest with yourself and you answer that question, then perhaps you will be able to see the error of your teaching. All right. So I killed the conversation when I asked him, so you do not believe there is a thousand year period after Jesus returns. Now, um, <laughs> So he's going on and on about that. I mean, this is the this is the crux of the matter. Is this idea of a thousand year period after Jesus returns? I just showed it to you. I showed you why it's wicked. I showed you why it's evil, cruel, stupid, dumb, all that. All right. And oh, I did make a mistake. Apparently, he showed him he pointed out a mistake that I had made. Let me find it. Right there. I clicked that instead of that. I didn't. I don't know. I'm too stupid. Right. He thinks I did that on purpose to deceive you. That's the problem I have. Is when you're teaching that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's not the end of the world. Because everything that you're implying here, harvest workers, harvest workers 1, 2, 1, 8, you're implying that unsaved people can wait until after Jesus comes to believe in him. And I think that's cruel. That's as cruel as it gets. Yeah. What's it? So, I'm not hiding that at all. I've been saying that for for months. The same thing, video after video. I'm not hiding that. At the beginning of this video, I noticed that you cleverly clicked on the end number. Well, that's only because I'm not very smart. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. Okay. At the beginning of this video, I noticed that you cleverly clicked on the end number of the timestamp provided instead of beginning number. Why did you click on the beginning number so we could hear everything you said? Why did you cleverly choose to click on the end number which represents where you are to stop? You clicked on the end number because you didn't want your viewers to hear what you had to say about me. Yeah, actually I did. I've been saying the same thing. Video after video, day after day, for weeks and even months. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness sakes. Here, how do I do this here? Let's do it this way. Can we do it this way? I mean, anybody that's been following me at all. I try not to make it every single video. But it's nearly every single video. Resurrection, that's two weeks ago. All right. The quack answers. I'm the quack, just so you know. Let's see here. In times, uh, souls <clears throat> under the altar. Excuse me. All right. Uh, let's keep going here. Left behind. I mean, th this is all about Revelation 20, right? This is all about the idea of two months ago. Um, this is what I've been doing bonus thousand years I've been doing this for months for months 
verse by verse over Revelation 20. I've been saying the same thing for months. For months. For months. For months. For months. For months. I think I've been saying it for years, actually. But <laughs> uh, I don't want to go back years. <clears throat> I don't want to see how many years. Has it been five, ten years? Doesn't matter, does it? So it doesn't matter. Who cares? Right? Who cares? That pre-zombie doctrine, seven months. You know what this is about, right? This is me opposed to the idea that there's going to be a thousand-year kingdom coming after Jesus comes in clouds of heaven. This is not a new thing for me. I'm not hiding nothing been trying to expose this and so that's why I ask you to to, the, <laughs> to think about it man just think about it what do I say here no no it's cruel to teach the unsaved they can wait until after Jesus returns to believe in him and that is exactly what you are teaching when you claim there's a thousand year reign of Jesus coming after his return it's the same thing Teach the unsaved. I never taught a single thing. When you say that you believe there's a thousand years coming after Jesus returns, that's your, that's you teaching. That's what you, whether you are standing in front of a classroom, doesn't matter. It's what you teach. What you believe, what you teach is the same thing. Now we are taught to preach the gospel to every creature. All right. And he said, "Go." And he said unto them, "Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature." We are preachers in preachers and teachers of God. And this is not a new idea. All right, the children of God have always been teachers and preachers. Preachers and teachers, it's the same thing. All right, we are priests of God right now. We are a kingdom of priests. We are commanded to preach the gospel to every creature. All right, so when you say, oh, there's a thousand years coming after Jesus returns, it's, it's a short teaching, whatever, however you want to describe it, however you want to label it, it's still teaching. It's what you teach. It's what you promote. It's what you believe. All right. And first, um, Peter chapter 2. We are a royal priesthood. We are a kingdom of priests. Right? <clears throat> and so there shouldn't be any mistake about it. He's going, well, I'm not a teacher. Yeah, you are. We all are. You know, whether um, you know, you're teaching right or wrong, you're still a teacher. We're all teachers. Okay, so, and he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. So anyways... Uh, that's that's it, man. That's it. I'm not trying to hide nothing. I'm trying to expose you and trying to help you at the same time. All right, because you're not believing the Bible. You're not believing the Word of God. You're not believing God. Instead, you are believing what other men have said you're believing what other men have told you that what God says you're trusting in men rather than God and I'm just I want to make that clear I want to make that easy for you or anybody else to see because Revelation 20 does not speak at all of a thousand year period after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and I, and I try to make the same points over and over. You can't have two ends of the worlds. You can't have two returns of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, it just doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, another another angle to look at this is if this was after the return of Jesus Christ then you've got nothing but saved people and you've got Satan gathering saved people and fire coming down from God and devouring saved people now this fellow here he does the same thing the thousand year earthly millennial kingdom and if you I was gonna read all this for you but it's it's the same it's the same stupid stuff Saints of God will reign with Christ for a thousand years It'll be a time of blessed joy, worldwide blessing, political justice, the Christ-centered kingship that will bring to fruition the confluence of all fanciness of the wonderful and irreversible divine covenants that Kenneth Copeland and God has made with Abraham, the land of Israel, with David and Billy Graham and whoever else and with Israel in the new covenant regeneration and forgiveness to God's people and then after at the end of the thousand years then Satan gathers them together to battle against God and fire comes down from God and devours all of you saved people is that is that what you're teaching man is that what you believe uh, this the whole stuff is the it's all stupid it's so stupid it it's hard to it, it really is hard to convince anybody of anything you, you can lie to them and everybody repeats the lie and then so everybody believes it now here comes somebody somebody comes along and and tries to convince you that you've been lied to that's hard it's hard to do because everybody else is saying one thing but the Bible says another thing and you think about this man you, you go to a public school system and every school teaches that you evolved from a monkey now everybody believes they evolved from a monkey now here comes so-and-so later on and says no that's not true well, that's what everybody else believes. So it makes it hard to convince them that no, you're not a you're not a monkey. Because it's been ingrained in them. Because it's been uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, cemented or supported or what have you? Be, because of so many other people believing the same thing. There's so many other people believing this one thing. And so the truth being very unpopular gets dismissed. And so that's what I'm that's all I'm doing, man. That's all I'm doing. And <laughs> I don't know. How long will I have to do this? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just doing it today. That's all I can't think about tomorrow can't worry about tomorrow you know I could step outside and a plane could drop on my head and that'll be it so I'm not gonna worry about how long I'm gonna do this I'm just gonna do this today right because this is phenomenal this is crazy really how many people get this wrong and, and they're not just getting this wrong they're getting everything wrong it's like nobody cares about the truth. You just want to look cool, wear your sunglasses, get your views, get your money coming in, right? These guys look humble, but oh yeah. But look at this guy, nice suit and tie, suit and tie guy, the cool guy with glasses, you know. And this guy here. <laughs> I mean, it's everybody. It's everybody right on down the line man right on down the line just send me the money just send me the money I'll talk about God for a few minutes just send me the money right that's all 
That's all they want. They, all they want is your money. That's why uh, most of them. That's why they get it. That, that's why they go to Bible Seminary College, whatever you call it, because they think this is a n nice and easy way to make some money and to control people. And you think about it. You got a church of 500 people. You can tell them what to do. You can pretend to be a good person, and you can make a lot of money. Ooh, wee, that's appealing. To have that power, control, and money over people. Huh? And that's what they do. And so when you got all these churches all around the world, and none of them care about the truth. That's what I'm seeing. Now think about this. I, you know, I wasn't going to get into this, but I will. Is this a salvation issue? Well, think about this. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe he will save you from the second death on judgment day. All right, but what if you believe that you will replace Jesus or even be your own Jesus of your own planet? Are you still saved? What if you believe that there are many Jesuses or many gods? And will you still be saved? What if you believe that Jesus and Buddha and Muhammad, it's all the same? You believe there are many paths to heaven. Is that are you saved? Does it matter? Is that a salvation issue? I'll say, well, I don't believe in Jesus gives me eternal life, but I, I believe Fred Flintstone does. Is that the same thing? No. So, well, what if you say, oh, I believe Jesus gives me eternal life, but Jesus and Fred Flintstone are brothers. So Jesus is the god of this planet but Fred Flintstone he's the god of all gods or whatever you know whatever does I mean does that matter I think it does what if I believe that Jesus will save me on judgment day but he only saves me for a um, period of time there's another dispensation coming after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and so I got to be a good person for an extended period of time and then there will be another judgment and hopefully I can endure that judgment and then move on to the next phase am I still saved? I, I don't know I don't know because you're not putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to give you everlasting life. Life that never ends. Eternal life. You don't believe in eternal security. So how can you say that you believe Jesus can save you? Or how, do you, how can you say that you believe Jesus saves you? you right now it, is it a salvation issue I, that's a tough question isn't it I don't know no, but if you're if you're believing that Jesus only saved you for a thousand years and then God's gonna destroy you I, I I would like some clarity on that. You know, whether a harvest one, two, harvest worker, one, two, one, eight, or whether it's you or anybody else. It's the same, I got the same question for you. Is that, is that what you're putting your hope in? Is a bonus thousand years until fire comes down from God and, and devours you? 
Well, what are you putting your hope into? Well, that matters, doesn't it? Maybe you're, are you, let's say you believe Jesus is coming and he'll save you from this world and deliver you into a world and it, where you have your own planet and you're able to have sex with all the virgins all the sex you want with all the virgins on that planet is that the same thing well you believe in Jesus right I mean isn't that good enough well when you believe that Jesus is going to deliver you into a world of nastiness and filthiness or into a world that is only for a limited period of time yeah, that's not the same that's not what I believe and that's not what the Bible teaches I believe in a world of everlasting life where there is no more sorrow no more crying no more tears no more death no more pain a world of everlasting life where there is no more death no more sin no more iniquity no more evil no more lies no more murder all of that is gonna be done away with that's where I'm putting my hope in I'm not putting my hope into a thousand year period a temporary period of whether you want to call it um, you know a thousand years of peace I'm not putting I'm not putting my hope in that I'm putting my hope in eternal life with peace that never ends you know I think it I think it matters I think it matters I really do so I probably went on too long but you know again it really comes down to do you believe the Bible if you don't believe the Bible then what do you believe I mean if you don't believe that that this world comes to an end when Jesus returns just be honest about what you believe all right again just be honest about what you believe don't be don't be afraid to share your thoughts right or wrong and then if you get offended that's okay Harvest workers 1218 he's so offended he don't know what to say he don't know what to say at all and he you know he doesn't want to have a conversation about this he doesn't want to address it and hopefully there comes a point in this gentleman's life where he says okay let's consider what the Bible says all right, let's just consider Revelation 20 all right. consider the fact that we do sit on thrones those of us that are saved we are kings and priests unto God and that judgment has already been given to us all right just consider that consider the fact that those of us that are born of the Spirit of God we have eternal life and that will never change the judgment of God has already been established for us that are born of God that's never gonna change and then consider the fact that that um, at the end of the thousand years is the end of the world All right, consider that right here it says and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years I don't remember what it was last night somebody said or, or something uh, suggested that Christ lives and reigns with us for a thousand years well let's, the Bible actually says the opposite that we live and reign with Christ during this thousand years the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years are finished this is the first resurrection blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection consider this that Jesus 
Christ is the first resurrection, and we are partakers of his resurrection, and that the second death has no power over us right now. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? <clears throat> the second death has no power over us at all. We are kings and priests unto God. We are a royal priesthood. We are a kingdom of priests right now. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. I don't know what to tell you because when you get past that and you're still holding on to this idea that there's a thousand years of what saved people only because right? that's the corner I'm trying to push you in harvest workers that's the corner where I'm trying to push you in because once you get to that point once you get to that point where you admit that you believe during this thousand years there's only saved people once you establish that and then you read verses 8 and 9 then maybe you can see the error of your way because verse 8 Satan gathers who together Satan gathers somebody together who I mean it's not one person it's not just Satan it's the, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea so your doctrine is saved people are going to be gathered by Satan and then fire is going to come down from God and devour all the saved people I for the life of me I, I don't know how anybody does not see this but this is what everybody's teaching nobody's thinking nobody's believing what the Bible actually says they're just believing what other men have told them. Ah, all right. So, that's enough for today. All right, have a great day, fellas. Come on now.